Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie comic interview. It is your Caped Crusader, Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our brand new friend, Brandon Ingram of Dismay Comics. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. And yeah, man, I am excited to break down this book. It had me, uh, you could say, hanging by a noose. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I I hope uh, in a good way it, it 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 has that effect on everyone. So, man, this was this was a really really interesting concept. You started creating comics in back back in uh, what 2019, I think, is uh, what your profile said. So, yeah, how yeah. how did you end up getting started into that, and how did it lead to the Gallows Man? It all kind of started with. Uh, my interest in screenwriting like screenplay writing mm -hmm. writing feature length scripts and short uh short movie scripts uh that was like shortly after high school so around like 2015 2016 um i got really into that and i just got dove deep into that and and tried to perfect that craft and stuff because i wanted to make like a, a short horror movie and i was a part of like a local uh little movie group like we'd okay. meet every couple months try to make like a short film or something like that it eventually fell apart but so what was uh, uh, your short horror movie about if you can give us like a little breakdown of it well it, it uh you'll likely see it in a comic in the next year or two but it was it was it was super short like it was like three to five minutes long we never mm -hmm. even like finished it we made a trailer for it for some reason we made a trailer for something that's only like three to five minutes long <laughs> um, <laughs> but, how, how uh, long it, was the trailer at least a minute okay <laughs> so, so you see like yeah, nearly big chunk. half the movie basically yeah um it, it, it was like nothing major it, it like had some true detective vibes but it was ultimately like uh they they a detective walks into this abandoned house and and the reason we went with this script that i wrote is because like it's the only thing we had available and abandoned location we found an abandoned location um which like it's just a bunch of friends making movies and stuff like this was not a good place like like there is like stuff all over the floors like there's potential of hepatitis and all yeah. this stuff everywhere <laughs> like it 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 is not a good place like every step you're walking because like the roof has kind of like collapsed in on the floor like you don't know if you'll like slip in or, or what but um that's the fun though right yeah yeah there there definitely is like a uh low budget adventure there um but basically they go in there's like a, a killing you don't really see like the the death yet um and these these cops are talking and and half of it is just this cop reading the serial killer's like letter that he left like a light he left a nice little letter on on near the house and stuff and it's super creepy and all mm -hmm. this stuff and then eventually gets done with the letter and he's like there's hints of it at the end of the letter he's like oh crap i i gotta go see this now because he just walked in on the scene the other cops like when he walked in there was a cop that came out like a rookie cop like he, he was about to vomit like he was holding his vomit and so he walks in and and it basically shows his face his reaction of like the killing scene mm -hmm. and like the the serial killer was he calls himself the artist and so he like is very artsy with his killing so if you've ever okay. seen like uh hannibal the tv show how like it, it's a lot of those murders and stuff it's very gruesome but there is like an artistry with it mm -hmm. um and it was kind of like that but because it was so low budget we were deciding because we never even got to this part yeah never finished it so we never got to this part we're trying to decide okay will we have a display of this like horrific slash artsy uh, uh murder that happened or will we just show the detective's face and his reaction and then it cuts away because we're like do we have the budget to do all the <laughs> the the blood and all that stuff so it never it never wound up with that but you will eventually see that in that's cool uh, 
in one of my horror anthology comics because I have made a, a, a comic of that. It'll just have to come out eventually. Okay. So yeah, that. Thank you for breaking that down. That was. Uh, I always love asking those questions because I feel like a, a lot of times, you know, people don't like people don't dive into like the very roots of everything because you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes it does uh, pop out a little nugget like something we can expect in the future. So this comic that we're here to talk about today was inspired by a 60s sitcom that you refused to give a name to in Quentin uh, Tarantino. <laughs> what was that 60s sitcom? Let's talk about it. Well, well not really a sitcom. It's a, I, I joke about it in in, uh, in the book and stuff. It, it's the anime, or not anime, the uh, the 1960s Batman show. The okay. Adam West show. Mm -hmm. like, like kind of that fun campiness of that show. That's That's kind of like the tone that you can see with it and then you know, mixed in with that tone is like that tarantino movie violence i i, I, I would say with uh Gallus man and uh newsboy you you kind of seen that batman and robin vibe with them yeah yeah exactly so yeah, yeah. yeah that was uh, what shoot what drove you did create Gallus man though this <laughs> what like they 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 hang people uh newsboy i mean this is a pretty insane concept and they're killing nazis which is even better I mean, and it's like set in the the 1960s. I mean, what what inspired this? This is this is such a crazy uh, concept. I love it. It's 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 a blend of different like inspirations and stuff. With it being set in uh, most of the story set in 1942, there's like a flashback here and there. Like in the first issue, there's one flashback. Don't expect flashbacks throughout the series. I know some people are iffy on flashbacks, but uh, there's that one flashback in issue one that's like over a year before the main uh story but it's kind of inspired by like the golden age uh how like w w when it comes to like the kind of darker and killing and stuff like that because golden age like it was ultimately i am against what the comics code did but with that saying i understand where they were coming from because a lot of the golden age stuff at the time was like some of it's like ah, i don't know if i want my little five-year-old to be reading yeah like, like different stuff like that so i i get where they were coming from but if ultimately they went extremely too far with the comics code but kind of how that golden age was where it's like yeah kind of anything goes we literally have superheroes killing people mm -hmm. like like we have a lot of these superheroes killing people and then a mix of Silver Age comics, where Silver Age comics, it's like goofy and fun, and like there, there's just just wacky stuff that can happen, which also leads into 1960s Adam West Batman show of, of during that time in comics and with that show, it's just like mm -hmm. yeah, fun and it, it's it's campy and and it has some corny jokes here and there. Um, so it's kind of a blend of all those and then to like hyper violent eyes that golden age inspiration took inspiration for more modern stuff with like movies nowadays i love me some quentin tarantino i love yeah. movies in general what's like, some uh, of your favorite movies by him my favorite I i've thought about this uh the past few weeks it always fluctuates it's always like uh oh, this one goes up this one goes down different stuff Right now, it's probably between Pulp Fiction and Kill Bill Volume 1. Yeah, so um, I, I love Kill Bill Volume 1. Uh, they're supposed to be yeah. making a, a new Kill Bill where it's supposed to be like their daughters, something along those lines. Oh, okay. Uh, like uh -huh. a, a little bit of an interesting concept. I, I loved uh, Shu. So Pulp Fiction was like one of my first like introductions. Reservoir Dogs is pretty good, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really liked, um, what is it? Uh, from Dust, uh, Dust to Dawn oh yeah yeah yeah. that yeah. one was like because the way it started out it started out as like it felt like a crime like bank robbery and then it was like a b like yeah. horror movie i loved it yeah um ships, yeah. yeah so um it was it was interesting so why the noose though like out of any route you could have gone like that's it was it was just it was crazy because like they they have a little uh trademarked like gadget that like is like you step on it it's a little button it automatically hangs them like um what drove you to want to use nooses uh kind of going into the the there, there's two things the first thing is going in with golden age comics 
and and there's multiple different inspirations from golden age comics there's literally uh, a six or seven issue uh series a long time ago called hangman it was a golden age comic and it just made me think of like wow like it's insane to think that there is a comic called hangman the superhero is called hangman and it made me think like so you have little kids who like look up to like spider-man they're like yeah spider-man's my favorite superhero character mm-hmm. and i was like what if that was the same for like that absurd like name like hangman like like what what if that was the case where it's a little five or six year old that's like wow my favorite superhero is is hangman like, like yeah it, it, that's kind of how like that started forming because i was like it, it's so absurd of a thought and that kind of plays into the world of of gallows man like town city like everyone's like yes we love gallows man and and his sidekick noose boy they're amazing you're even practicing that voice huh that was pretty good yeah yeah (laughs) there's like (laughs) there's all these people that are just like whoa yeah we love you gallows man and even like kids love them and stuff and it's just like yeah but like the name gallows man is like so strong and yet there's all this like weird love for Mm -hmm. him as well as like what you're saying he kills the the mobsters as well as nazis and stuff like like he kills nazis that's good but then it's also like ah like this was kind of like a petty mugger like a petty theft guy over here yeah he was getting ready to take down some homeless people (laughs) <laughs> yeah he's, exactly. like, he's, he's just like yeah screw these homeless guys like yeah. you you're done and, um and like oh I, I was gonna say and like uh not not to people don't have to read into the story they can ultimately it's a fun time mm-hmm. it's ultimately just just to be a fun time but if you are trying to read into it like there is a little bit of commentary of like desensitization of violence in our culture nowadays where we're like everyone in town city as well as gallows man newsboy the the people that hang around are just like yeah go get him gallows man like like (laughs) take that guy out as well as like uh there's no like flinching Mm -hmm. of like some of the the violence that happens or or and you get you get pretty graphic in it too so we see uh his brother get his his head essentially caved in with a with a swatska yeah yeah uh which i thought was really like insane like they were both there to take down uh it, his name was uh well uh major major, major swastika. swastika i yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure i had that correct um and then was uh was that like uh did he have like a speech impediment or was that just like his yeah so so if you're reading the the dialogue of major swastika you notice spelling is very weird that that's on purpose Mm -hmm. it's supposed to get your brain to like kind of say it like that but to help with that uh how i have it in my brain is like he's speaking english but he has like that thick nazi germany accent but along with that he has like an elmer fudd speech impediment yeah yeah i got you that's kind of how that that weaves in and I just thought that was a, a insanely like brutal way to kind of have that flashback. I know you talked about some people are hit or miss with them. Um, why why do you feel that is like why do you think there's that you know that line with the flashbacks? Um, well, it, it ultimately is if it's overdone, or or if it it feels too much like an exposition dump. Um, the flashbacks can be done well, or they can be done good. I think. Because in the whole four issue mini series, that's the only one you'll see is in issue one, and it 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 serves a purpose. Yeah, and it's not entirely to <clears throat> feel super long or, or feel too much like an exposition dump or mm-hmm. anything like that. It, ultimately, this is kind of a dark comedy book, so so it kind of is delving into how we got to this point with with gallows man and eventually trying to find major swastika and stuff um but yeah i mean like like uh with with the comedy aspect like before they're leading up to the flashback like gallows man is doing his like monologue to himself Mm -hmm. he's like 
that night when I, I lost everything. I can't remember exactly what he said but that night when I, when I lost everything. And this was like, Gallows Man? He's like, yes, that night. And this was just like, uh, Gallows Man. And just goes into the flashback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, it was it was pretty insane too because then we follow him back home and uh he sleeps with his mask on it looked like or he, he like starts his day yeah. with his mask on and then he like it, it's almost like the complete opposite of when a uh like like superman when he turns into kent clark that's kind of like him during the day but it seems like gallows man you know he he's he's like the superhero like so he's that's that that's him and then he becomes like a regular civilian almost yeah, like yeah. the like opposite like when a civilian would become the superhero so it was kind of yeah. it was kind of clever i mean what what drove you to do you know start out with that with him waking up with the with the mask on and everything uh ultimately there there was a little bit of that like realizing like this character ultimately is the superhero like like the the day job thing is like his his it's the alter ego but that's not truly who he is but like even within the day job thing he still acts like gallows man like mm -hmm. in his speech and his his joyousness and all that stuff but he does really enjoy the superhero stuff that's like his priority thing but ultimately with that scene kind of a big thing that like caused me to write that scene was i just really wanted i thought it was funny the idea of just like he, he had his his nightly superhero stuff and then he wakes up the next morning and he's in his whitey tidies yeah but he still sleeps with the mask on yeah he, he goes out and he his apartment's not bad but the area of the town he's in isn't that good because he looks out the window and he's like good morning town citizen or town city citizens and all who inhabit it and it's like not a good view yeah yeah well like there's just trash and stuff but he's still like happy he's like ah yes he, so and even his dog has the mask yeah the everything. mask i loved it uh so this ended up actually being uh way longer than the traditional comic um way longer than i feel like even graphic novels sometimes uh uh roughly what well, how many pages like 59 i think was the first one right well just with the first issue and that just story alone is 49 pages so of story alone 49 pages um and then there's a few pages of like behind the scenes stuff as, as well as like a couple ads towards the back of the book but yeah just story alone it was 49 pages yeah that's pretty impressive i mean what drove you to kind of create a book of this length you, you plan on making uh the next you say you're gonna have uh four issues in, in total right oh, so yeah, uh right. you said you're gonna try to make all of them the same length too uh i think the si the second one's just two pages uh, shorter than the first right yeah, yeah. The second one is 47 pages of story. Uh, there's the, the behind the scenes stuff with that as well. And then I guess technically you could say the second one is 49 pages of story because there's a two page little noose boy story. Okay. Of, uh, kind of some stuff away from Gallows Man and the team, like focus on noose boy and some of his stuff. No, I got you. Yeah. And uh, noose boy is a pretty funny individual as well. Like, how did his uh, design come up? You know, his character uh, model. It, it was kind of like that thought of, I wanted this Batman and Robin type dynamic of, of this superhero character um, who Gallows Man to me is like anywhere between 35 and 45. So you could say he's like nearly 40 years old or something. Mm -hmm. And then this classic Robin like 10 to 13 year old like this kid that's like i don't even know if he's hit puberty yet yeah um, yeah and and like the design of him ultimately came from like what what would look at first kind of cute as like as a little kid like if, mm -hmm. if you had your little brother or your son or whatever and they dress up and you're like oh that's kind of cute and then like you think about it as well as you see Newsboy in action. It's like, oh my gosh! Yeah, so not so like, what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, it ultimately came to like. At first, he looks kind of cute, and I was like, okay, so executioner outfit I think would be fitting for mm -hmm. this because because you have uh, Gallows Man, you have their base called the Guillotine. I was like, okay, an executioner outfit would be perfect for the sidekick. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, it was from like 
just looking at so many different reference photos, trying to get the right executioner fit for him. Basically, it was like, I want elements of this, but not that. And then elements of this, elements of this, and just kind of amalgamation of this little executioner board. No, and I, I love the design as well. I think both of them had awesome, you know, like costumes and masks. And I really liked how uh, we saw Gallows' man's dog, like, have the same mask as well. I thought that was pretty humorous. Yeah. So that kind of, like, wraps up issue one. We, we, we kind of see, um, uh, you know, forces behind the scenes start hunting him down. Um, and it kind of sets the tone for maybe a little bit more of a nefarious uh, story within issue two. It, it does uh, dive into that. And, and I'll say at least with issue two, um, from where issue one leaves off to the very beginning of issue two, it starts off like a little bit further in time than you would think. It's not the next day or anything like that. It, it's a little bit of time has passed. And ultimately, because with issue one, towards the end, they're trying to find leads on trying to find Major Swastika, mm -hmm. and they come up a little bit uh, empty-handed. And so it kind of picks up from there in issue two of like, okay, don't have leads, where do we go from there? And it kind yeah. of goes from there, kind of. No, I gotcha. And uh, yeah, so I think this would actually be a perfect time to transition into uh, the Kickstarter. Do you want to go ahead and get that pulled up? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, here's the campaign. As you can see, um, we have hit our goal. Uh, we, we hit that within the first few days. I'm, I'm very thankful for everyone that's that backed it then and is continuing to back it. We're at 900 right now. Um, mm -hmm. and, and even though we hit the goal, we're still pushing forward. We're still striving to, to get this book as far as it can go because we've got uh, a 42 backer giveaway as you can see it's 36 backers right now getting close you get the 40 oh yeah when you get the 42 backers there's a, a giveaway well I'll, I'll give away some stuff for a, a one lucky physical backer i'll, I'll pick that randomly through a, a random name generator um as well as uh when we hit a thousand dollars that's our second stretch goal and there will be um, in all physical backers, they'll get a no butt sticker, which let me scroll down to those stretch goals. I'll scroll back up to all this stuff while I'm thinking about it. So Real quick, uh, we have Dom and Aaron over on YouTube saying hello. Hey, welcome dudes in the chat. I appreciate awesome. you guys stopping in and watching us. How are you, how are yeah, you guys doing? You. Any uh, questions, feel free to ask away. Yeah. Um, so, so we've already hit the first stretch goal, which is 750. So all physical backers will get this new spoy bookmark right here where he's saying, remember kids, littering is the truest form of villainy. <laughs> um, that is, is definitely a uh, strong front on new spoy's part. And you'll see more about this and where this came from in that two page, uh, little story in gallows man number two, where it follows mm -hmm. new spoy. Um, but this is the one we're working towards right now. Uh, second stretch goal. Everyone, all physical backers will get this no butt sticker. So if we hit this, um, you can use the sticker. If anyone's ever like, but, 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 but you hit them with the sticker. Hit them with the like, sticker. No butts. Or <laughs> if for some reason there, there's someone uh, backing their butt up on you that you don't want to have their butt back. Get up it on. out of here get a sharpie get a sharpie marker add an extra t and then throw that sticker on no buts um and and yeah there there's the third stretch goal it's a uh one of the horror uh comics i've been working on but let me go up here real quick so ultimately you can read through uh this stuff like i mentioned before uh, four issue mini series. This Kickstarter is for issues one and two, mm -hmm. um, and this is the cover of the first issue, the main cover. Um, awesome! Very it's very much, awesome. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Tikas, he he did an amazing job, and I'll, I'll show the uh, the first cover he did for for issue one further down. But uh, there's that. I actually have actual reviews of. Uh, the comic from mm -hmm. 
real review people whenever i did a kickstarter for the first issue a year ago i didn't have anyone review it yet so i just had to make up stuff man we're gonna and have like to get this. uh we're gonna have to get keeping a geekly on that oh just yeah for sure looking naked like, without like, it uh, like uh I i'll show it later but on the back of issue one because i didn't have any actual reviews at the time I have, well, I can say it as a comic book, and it says Grant Morrison, and then in parentheses it says, not that one. Um, and then <laughs> another review was, boy, do I feel sorry for whoever had to raise the so-called writer, and who wrote that? The writer's mom, and in parentheses, <laughs> that one. Um, hey, I mean, it had to be uh, special, though, to have your mom be uh, one of the quotes on the back of your first book, though. Yeah, yeah, which which I, I, I'll, I'll defend my mom. She didn't actually say that, but I, I did run it by her to ask her if it'd be all right if I put mm -hmm. that. She was fine. She was a little bit like, you don't, you know I don't think that. I'm like, I, <laughs> I got to have something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is uh, the, the variant cover for issue two. Uh, Rick Alves did this one. Um, I love both covers. I, I love this one a lot because uh, there's some weird idea that came in my head and I was trying to decide which art style would work best for it, Rick or Thomas's. And I eventually went with Rick's because I think the, the more cartoony uh, uh, Scotty Young -S art style works for this of mm -hmm. Gallows Man propping up like he's, he's like a a schoolgirl laying on a bed or whatever. Draw me like and, a French girl. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you have new boy right there holding the rope to the, the guillotine. Um, and then, yeah, I, I've got seven preview pages of issue two right here. Um, and, and people can can read through those. They can go to the and it kind of kind of gives you a good idea of like what to expect, like with with oh, the type yeah, of humor, yeah. too, I think. He's yeah, like right yeah, here he hangs sure. them and then uh they they walk in on him so he like he like puppeteers the the, the corpse I think it was yeah like yeah yeah like like because because his uh his little noose reel tm uh it jammed so so yeah he had to <laughs> to think fast and, and like you said he's he's marionetting him right here yeah yeah <laughs> uh, to, to all the other the other uh workers in the shipyard mm -hmm. um and so that's kind of the preview pages of that you can see the our team that's me uh helen bolton who's the artist she whatever's above a quadruple threat i don't know the the five uh word for defcon yes she's that um she I, she I think right something like that i'll go with that she 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 did the pencils she did the ink she okay. did the colors she did the lettering and on top of that she she does some of the promotional material like uh sorry i'm i'm making viewers throw up by scrolling so fast uh like like this like i i mm -hmm. told her the idea for the newsboy bookmark and she did that so yeah she's uh she's a, a defcon threat um and then you have thomas tikas who did uh that black and white cover you got rick alvis who did that that guillotine cover that's various reward tiers right there the stretch goals and this is that that first cover of issue one that thomas did um really like it a lot um and, and yeah and then <clears throat> for those that haven't read issue one because i know there's a lot of new readers coming into this kickstarter i also have seven preview pages of, of issue one Okay. So you got 14 preview pages just on this Kickstarter page. So you're able to tell from there as well as watch the trailer to kind of see if if this is for you or not. Mm -hmm. So um, was the walrus like a playoff of the penguin? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm getting, so I'm getting good at this. For. You better watch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because I remember you said it was, you know, you, you took inspiration from Batman. So when I first read it, I was like, walrus. I was like, this is a pretty outlandish name. And then it, it all clicked. I was like, oh, that's that's the penguin. Okay. Exactly. So who's, who is the yeah. jackal supposed to be? The jackal is kind of it, some of these characters, because you'll later see in issue one, you saw the, the frog, the mm -hmm. character, the frog. Like all of these characters are kind of, yes, it, it's Batman, but it kind of takes a little bit of a page from how Spider-Man does its characters. It's all these animal names. I gotcha. 
characters and stuff. So you got Walrus, you got Jackal, you got uh, the Frog in issue one. Not all of the characters are, are animal based names, but uh, mm -hmm. I just thought that was that was kind of fun. God, and that Frog goes out in a horrific manner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Cyanide capsule is not fun. But yeah, and then that, this is uh, just kind of like the, the the type of humor you'll see uh, within it. I and I, that was just like oh, yeah, that yeah. was before the intro to the actual issue too, which I thought was pretty clever. Uh, these books are forty nine pages long too, so like double, yeah. almost double the length of your average comic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Forty nine pages of story because not not to bash the big two or anything. Like they'll they'll put out a book and say it's twenty two pages, or maybe they'll say it's thirty two pages, but like five six seven of those pages are ads mm -hmm. like they're not actual story pages so of story you get 49 pages in each of these books as well as some behind the scenes stuff and then my ads i only have like two ads and they're in the very back of the book i'm not gonna no offense to dc comics i'm not gonna do what they did with the rebirth books and let's say you're reading action comics you have superman fighting doomsday back in the rebirth era superman's fighting doomsday and then you flip the page and you have doomsday like freaking out and superman's like i think we can solve this with a snickers yeah like, yeah i remember here, the snicker eat this. exactly he's like eat this and then turns into wonder woman it's like oh that was a snicker ad that was so weird i was just seeing him fight doomsday in the actual story this kind of tricked me mm -hmm. this ad <laughs> but uh did you end up no. buying a snickers though uh, not because of that ad. No, uh, I do maybe. like Snickers. I, I <laughs> maybe, yeah, it's probably a, sub, a subconscious thing. It's Sub subliminally buying like uh, Snickers. I get it. I get it. Yeah, DC, yeah. you're you're onto us. <laughs> yeah, you you know what works by cramming these confusing ads in the middle of my Superman story, making me think it's a part of the actual story. <laughs> so this is actually uh, um, the villains uh hand smashing that radio as well right yes that that's technically the first appearance of major swastika is his hand right there mm -hmm. on page seven so what drove you to kind of go with like uh the, like the uh him as a villain um it, it was kind of one of those things where nazis are the villains we can all agree on smashing yeah yeah touche um touché. It, it's kind of that uh, of like we're all in unison of nazis are bad let's take them out um and you already have gallows man who's like if you take the nazis out of the the story gallows man is a little bit iffy because it's like yeah like I, I get him like killing these guys or these guys but like that was just like a, a mugger over there um but when you have the threat of Nazis in there, it's like, all right, Gallows man, go all out. Because Swatsika is is insane. Like like I said, he, he smashed his brother's head in with a with a Swatsika yeah. statue, yeah. and it was insane. Uh, I mean, man, that was that was such a brutal way to take out his brother too. Um, but oh, you yeah. were you were exhibiting your uh, Quentin uh, Tarantino vibes, huh? That was the thing is I didn't realize that till a couple weeks ago. I was talking to someone, and they were like, "That felt," I, I, because I, I mentioned the the Quentin Tarantino influence, and they were like, "I can definitely see that. That, that I can see like some influence from Inglorious Bastards." And I was like, "Oh, wait a second. I know exactly what you're talking about. I mm -hmm. guess subconsciously, yes, that that scene with the baseball bat kind of plays into it. I never thought about that till a couple weeks ago, though." So that was really interesting. No, and dude, that it's a that's a really good movie too. There's a whole lot of Nazi killing in it. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, so this is uh the preview pages we're looking at. What else uh, can we expect at the bottom, or is this at the bottom? Uh, that that's pretty much the bottom. This is social media okay. stuff and so, various uh, stuff like that. So, do you want to kind of go through some of your tiers on the right side, so we can kind of see like yeah, what yeah. what people are gonna get for their dollar? Yeah, for sure. So uh, there's a tier for literally any budget because I understand like times are money. Money's tough. Money's sh strapped right now. Like uh, gas is insane. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, gas is insane. Grocery prices are 
even more ridiculous or starting to get more ridiculous. So I get it. So there's a tier for literally any budget and any little bit helps. Any little bit helps this project. Um, uh, so, so with this, you have tiers ranging from $1 all the way to $70. And with this $1 tier right here, the social media, thank you just for doing $1 will include your, your Kickstarter username or whatever name you want us to use on our thank you post uh, for Facebook and Instagram. Um, and then for those that have already read issue one that back the first, uh, the first Kickstarter a year ago or have already read issue one, you get issue two uh, digitally for just five bucks. You Which that's pretty that cheap. Yeah, that, that, that's a good oh, price. Yeah. Yeah, for, for how long the book is, I, I feel it's it's a very uh, a very reasonable price. And then if you haven't read any of it, haven't read any of the Gallows Man, you can get both issues one and two digitally for just eight bucks. That's even better because that's that's almost a hundred pages. That's that's almost, at least over eighty, right? Yeah, almost a hundred pages of story. And then if you're interested in the behind the scenes stuff, you can read that as well. So yeah, just eight bucks you get all of that. And again, you get a thank you um, in our post. Um, and then starting at $10, you can get physical copies of the book. This is issue two. If you haven't read any of issue two or, or any of uh, The Gallows Man yet, you've only read issue one, there's some catch up bundles like with this okay. one right here for just 26 bucks. You get signed uh, the first issue of Gallows Man, the, the first cover done by Thomas Tika's as well as signed the second issue of Gallows Man, cover done by Thomas Tikas, and you get a sticker set of the Gallows Man. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be three stickers in total, not including oh, cool. the stretch goals we've hit. What type um, of stickers? I don't have them on me yet, but uh, whenever we get out of here, or whenever I, I get off the screen share, I can show you examples of last Kickstarter okay. sticker set. Okay, yeah. Um, which last the stickers from last Kickstarter, you can see those in the add-ons. So, so when you're in this Kickstarter and you're checking out and stuff, if you want to get some of those old stickers, mm -hmm. you can add those from the, uh, the add-on section. But yeah, with this, you get signed physical copies, you get PDFs of the physical copies, you get, uh, the scripts, the, the PDF scripts of issues one and two. And again, that, that thank you right there. Um, if, if you want it all. If you want uh, the regular uh, uh, cover version of issue one and the variant cover of issue one, you want the regular cover of issue two and the variant cover of issue two, all signed, um, you can get this this complete bundle right here of issue one and two, um, okay. as well as it comes with the sticker set from issue one, mm -hmm. comes from sticker set of issue two, PDF copies of both, PDF copies of both scripts, and that thank you um and i've got some retailer bundles because uh in the first kickstarter I, I had a couple comic shops that that uh that reached out and oh they, that's they really cool that's awesome so with this one if, if there's a comic shop that's already done issue one before there's an issue two retailer bundle and if there's a comic shop or just anyone who just wants a large variety of these comics there's one for both issues one and two and you can see all the stuff right there you get 10 copies in total for for 45 bucks plus Which shipping is, yeah that's a pretty outstanding um, price yeah yeah like it's one of those things where it, i'm there there's not any form of a profit being made with these it's ultimately like you're willing to have it in your shop i'm i this will just cover the the printing costs mm -hmm. and the shipping costs basically um see you real quick uh there's also custom digital art tier so if you want uh specific custom digital art by helen bolton who did the art for the gallows man she she will do it and this is the tier to do it for um you can read through that uh nearly anything you want as long as it's a uh, no no sexual or suggestive commissions okay um we're, we're not going to do any like rule 34 gallows. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, and then, uh, last two tiers, you have the cr creator value bundle comes with everything from that, uh, 
that complete bundle, like all the signed copies, all the PDF stuff, mm-hmm. all the stickers, all that stuff, as well as a, a Zoom uh, consultation call, like a script consultation with me. Um, and that's a at least two hour consultation call I'm willing to do. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, if there's any new writers that are, are wanting to get their script looked at or whatever, uh, you can you can do that one. And then the last one, this is for the the ultimate ultra collectors out there. We got an issue one metal cover variant. Ooh, so that, yeah, that'll be nice. So it's this cover, but it's a metal cover variant of it, as well as the back of the book, <clears throat> like how you see those barcodes on comics and stuff. Mm-hmm. We have those on ours. There is a uh, differentiator with that variant so so you'll see a number change on the back okay. of it just so it's it's not like one of those things where it's like oh you just made the the cover metal no 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 like you will see on the back that yes it is literally a variant um so with this you get all the stuff i mentioned before in that complete bundle or, or not the complete bundle sorry you get this cover right here, mm-hmm. but metaled, and and these things are so cool. I saw someone do an unboxing of one recently. That's what got, that's what inspired me to do this one. Um, and then you get all this stuff right here, but we're just making no more than 25 of these metal cover variants, like 25 ever. We're not reprinting them or anything like that. 25 in existence. No, that sounds really so, cool though. Yeah, so it's one of those things where like. It will be the rarest cover or, or rarest copy of Gallows Man number one. Because there's mm-hmm. just going to be 25 out there. And kind of spoiler alert, like I want to keep one for myself. And then I want to have one that I can take to like convention shows and stuff. So to the public, really only like 23 ever. Okay. Yeah, no, that's really cool though. I, I think that's a cool concept. I haven't really heard of a metal metal cover cover. Yeah. Metal covers, really. You said you wanted to show something once we got to our uh, back to our original layout. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, at first, there was a couple things I wanted to show. Let me show the uh, that little review because I've got the the physical copy of issue mm-hmm. one right here. Thick book because because again, forty nine pages of story. But uh, there's that, okay. that little thing <laughs> I printed. Yeah, uh, I, I like that a lot. Um, but what I did want to show was the sticker examples, which let me go ahead and say this, that 42 backer giveaway, one lucky person will get all of this stuff. You get Disney comic sticker. Oh, that's cool. These are really nice stickers. You'll get a gallows man sticker, which this is actually the, the concept art that we went for before doing the whole, like put it in it to page basically. Mm-hmm. So Gallows Man sticker, um, Gallows Man title sticker. So you can put this on anything and it's now called the Gallows Man. Yeah. Stick it on your forehead, <laughs> you're now called the Gallows Man. Stick it on your wall, your wall is called the Gallows Man. Um, this little sticker right here. Oh, the dog, uh, yes. It's, it's That's a, awesome. A poop joke sticker. It says, I see you've started your morning duties already. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as this first gallows man bookmark from the, the first kickstarter uh you get all of that like one lucky person will get all that but the reason i wanted to show this not just for that giveaway but just examples of the stickers we do in these sticker sets like yeah, uh yeah. with the issue two sticker set you'll see new stickers you'll see this one you'll get a disney comic sticker with that sticker set but you also get so there's a gallows man here. You'll mm-hmm. there's a new spoy version. So you'll get a new spoy sticker in issue two, um, as well as a few other, uh, or one other sticker um, that that uh, we just recently finished, um, as well as we hit these stretch goals. You also get those stickers as well. So yeah. So. Oh, that's really cool. I think your merch looks awesome. I think the quality of it really speaks for itself as well. And I, I'm glad to see that you, you've you almost doubled your goal. Uh, for yeah. anyone out there that is doing their Kickstarter or thinking about planning to do a Kickstarter, what type of uh, things would you say to them to kind of help them have a, a, a more successful one? Like, what are the some of the things you've done 
to kind of help you get success with your first and second one? Um, uh, kind of what I've, and, and I'm not like, uh, I, I'm extremely successful in these Kickstarters that I do, but I'm not doing like, uh, the, the, the amount of backers and stuff that other people are doing, but I am successful in these Kickstarters. A major thing is just reaching out to people as well as like, if you're going to reach out to people or do various stuff like that, do it in advance, like, mm -hmm. like plan this stuff months in advance, plan your Kickstarter months in advance. Um, reach out to relatives. Um, it's up to you. You don't have to reach out to all of them. Um, I only <laughs> reached out to a certain few. I'm not going to reach out to my grandma about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure she'd support it, but, uh, the second she'd read it, I, I just don't think it's for her. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but, but be willing to reach out to people about this. Uh, uh, I, I know it, it's, awkward it's awkward for me but reminders are important like to remind people yeah. that the book's still there or the book is about to come out um you, you might feel weird about it like ah oh, gosh i just messaged them like like during your kickstarter i just messaged them like a couple weeks ago ah, it's gonna be weird messaging them again don't worry about it like like if you have a decent relationship with them it's all good yeah they're not gonna care yeah exactly they're not going to care at all um so so just be willing to reach out to people um definitely do your homework on this stuff like i'm not trying to like uh self-promote my podcast or anything i think there's other ways you can go find out information about this but i have a podcast called store brand comics and this isn't what the podcast is about but we had a two episode little thing on creating indie comics and mm -hmm. i just like vomited out of my mind of, of like in total both episodes are like four to five hours long that's, that's just awesome. going through just going through like all the stuff i know like from writing to finding an artist mm -hmm. to uh, uh even some of the the stuff that people don't really talk about or anything like the legalistic stuff like making a work for hire contract and different stuff like that mm -hmm. to finding printers um all the way up to distribution like how you'll distribute it which i'm limited with that i'm not i'm yeah, not going yeah, through yeah. diamond diamond or anything like that but just ideas of distribution um so so that's an avenue that doesn't mean you have to watch that but i mm -hmm. do recommend doing the research there there's tons of videos tons of uh, uh video essays people have done on running a successful comic kickstarter um one thing i would recommend this is just from me personally if it's your first comic don't set the goal too high yeah um i i could set mine higher the, the only reason i set mine so low is like not entirely out of fear that we won't meet that higher goal but more of like oh, these people backed it like i i want to get it printed for them i don't mm -hmm. want it to get mm -hmm. to where if we don't meet our goal ultimately they don't get charged because people don't their their yeah. credit cards don't get charged unless it's actually successfully funded but they also can't get, get the, the book, book. yeah yeah exactly um and it's one of those things where like i have invested a ton of my own money into that like 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 the art mm -hmm. hiring people all this stuff like that's out of my pocket and i'm okay with that like like i saved up over the years so i could do that yeah and and ultimately like like this like people pledging and backing and supporting it is so we can get it printed so i can get it into your hands um and, and just go from there because ultimately mm -hmm. that is the only way to read my books is is to pledge to these kickstarters to back these kickstarters they're it's not going through diamond it's your I, I pulled them from comic shops like local comic shops i pulled them from comic shops so the way to read it is just through this kickstarter i gotcha so uh yeah that's and i'm sure that's a pretty interesting uh route to go because 
um, they have no choice but to back in order to get them. And, you know, I think that in, in itself essentially helps fund the campaign even that much further. Um, wow, such a, a, a crazy, like, amount of information. I really appreciate just how in-depth you went with that and, like, a, a nice little breakdown of what to expect. Um, feel free to give your podcast a, a shout-out one more time if you want, uh, where uh, listeners can expect to find it. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much most podcast listening <laughs> apps, you can go to Spotify if, if it's not on the, the app you use. Mm-hmm. But uh, go to Spotify or, or whatever, and it's Store Brand Comics. Um, it's me and my buddy, Tio. Uh, like half the time we're doing discussion stuff, like philosophical discussions about certain comic stuff or, mm-hmm. or how the market's going or whatever it may be, or just random stuff that somehow ties back to Batman or ties back to poop. <laughs> um, or the other 50% of the time is us doing like pitches, like, like fan pitches for like comics. Like we're currently doing a, a, a DC uh, cinematic rebirth or cinematic universe reboot series, like mm-hmm. reboot all of the DCEU and starting from scratch. And we're doing that. And we've done like, we're, we're fixing to do like a doom patrol pitch. Oh, that's so like cool. We've done, yeah. We've done like eight or nine of those. And then the one we've done since the very first episode of the podcast, a couple of years ago, is a Marvel reboot series where like, Marvel, the comic company, what if it just rebooted like Valiant Comics back in 2012 mm-hmm. and go from there, basically. And okay. we're now on like year three That's of cool. our, our publishing idea of that and the various books and the stories that are told mm-hmm. within those books, as well as you can see just random pitches we do like uh, uh, there's a predator on the planet of the apes where it's it's predator crash lands on the planet of the apes and it goes from there and we pitch it out okay. and work through the story um even to the point where the most random thing we did recently i want to do this more often is we both we we don't discuss it with each other or anything we both pick a franchise or a big not a big title a franchise or something like that and we come to each other and are like okay here's my franchise there's your franchise let's make Mm -hmm. a story out of it let's make a crossover and the one we did recently was saw the franchise that was my thing i came to the the table with and he did uh spice and wolf it's like an anime and manga series okay i'm sure that was yeah that sounds insane we somehow made that work It, it turned into more of a comedy which is pretty funny um we were going serious at first but it just went straight comedy after a while uh but i'd like to do more of that type of stuff but i should also mention with this podcast it's not scripted at all especially with the pitches and stuff none of it's scripted the only thing we come up with before is like okay let's do uh plan the apes and predator crossover okay that's it don't don't talk anymore after that when we get on the podcast we'll flesh it out like and that. I think that's how you get some of the most like organic like conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As well as like sometimes, often one of us will come up with a good idea, and then the other will be like, "Holy crap! Yeah. Yes!" <laughs> like that. Where it feels more organic, and, and mm-hmm. it's more exciting for us as we're telling the story. So, so story brain comics, you can check that out. Yeah, man, that is so awesome. Uh, congratulations on hitting three years with it. That that's a remarkable yeah, feat to do. Um, so before we wrap up completely, I do want to ask you one last question because as much as I love this being like a spotlight for you and your comic, I uh, also want to acknowledge it as like a tool for anyone watching too. So with that being said, for any person in the chat that might be struggling with getting their own comic idea off the ground and, and onto paper or any sort of digital format what sort of advice would you give them to kind of help push through like any sort of barrier they're facing just to kind of get that idea going so uh i i, I this won't take too long but i do want to focus on this because you kind of got to break it down so writing let's start with writing right there if you're having trouble writing this idea or whatever first you need to have an idea Mm -hmm. have that idea that concept that pitch whatever it may be and go from there uh those uh, when it comes to ideas and stuff i can't like give you advice on how to get those it usually is just random stuff 
yeah. you're driving down the road or you're taking a shower or you're doing this or you're doing that rarely have my ideas come from me sitting down and thinking okay what's an idea <laughs> ideas usually come randomly for me uh, mm -hmm. sometimes dreams so i guess that's one bit of advice is if, if you want to keep a dream journal you can um you'll have to stick uh, uh strict with it because i wasn't able to stick strict with it because the second i wake up if i'm about to write something i'm going to be awake yeah. so a lot of times i'll be like i'm not going to write anything i'm going back to sleep and then i forget the idea yeah yeah no um, i get it <laughs> but uh so ideas there's not a ton i can help you with there but you got your idea okay the big thing there is to discipline yourself in sitting down and trying to work something out mm -hmm. you don't have to do this but i think a lot of times when you have an idea and you're like where the crap do i go from here it's like this seems so big like i want to turn it into this or that but where do i go from here something that can help with that like like a a, a step towards that mm -hmm. maybe do an outline of the idea it doesn't have to be like a, a, a script bible or anything like that yeah. but just like couple page outline of where you want to see the series or, or the idea or whatever go. And as you're doing that, you'll form the story a little bit more. You're like, okay, this will happen. And then this is the middle part. And then this, this is what I want to see at the end. At mm -hmm. the very least, try to think of like what you want to see towards the beginning and what you want to see towards the end. Um, and then just work that I, that outline a bit. And then from there, it depends on what media you want to go through, but let's say movie or comic or whatever, read over that outline and then sit down and try to write out. Don't, don't focus on like, okay, today I'm going to work on issue one. Today I'm going to work on issue two or whatever. Just focus on like how that outline is. Start writing it. Like, like, don't, don't worry about like, uh, ah, oh, but like, I don't know where issue two or issue three will fit. Like worry about that later. Yeah. Work on trying to get the story completely done or, or a rough version of the story. But what I mean by that is don't get caught in the weeds. Mm -hmm. I, I struggled with that a, a good bit at the beginning. I still struggle with it a little bit when you're writing, you, you need to have at least a little bit of a flow. So you're writing something and then you stumble upon like a dialogue or a scene and you're like ah crap i don't know what they should say or anything like that but i still have an idea of what will happen next skip that for now yeah put a little yeah. memo put a little memo say i'll come back to what they'll say or whatever keep going with the story try to keep that flow going if you break that flow and you're focused on that yeah by the end of you writing you might get that piece of dialogue down mm -hmm. But now you're exhausted. And yeah, you're like, yeah. I'll come you're back. To the, I'll come back to the story tomorrow or whenever, and sometimes that might not happen because you were so frustrated with just that bit of dialogue or whatever. So I highly recommend just trying to get through that story. Get, mm -hmm. Find a find a breaking point. Don't try to write the whole story in a day. Like like pace it. Pace yourself. Don't exhaust yourself. But uh, yeah, if there's parts like little bits of dialogue or stuff that like narrative wise, it, 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 it's not going to affect how you're writing here. Mm -hmm. Skip it and come back to it later. And just as you're going along, keep writing, get to that end, then go back, fill in those little spots, then read it all. See if it's cohesive. Um, see what editing needs doing. Do your edit, see what you need to pull out, what you need to put in. And then from there, if there's like little nitpick stuff like grammar or whatever, do those edits. Okay. Um, that's what I would highly recommend with writing. And if you're worried about uh, uh, style of writing, like it, it, I want it to be written as a screenplay is written. Mm -hmm. Like there's a specific format for that or, or a specific format for this or whatever. Don't worry about that at first. Get the story done. Worry about the style, the format after the story. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, you definitely 
uh, because you could always change the style of the format once you have the bones to work exactly. with. No, that is some awesome advice. I really appreciate that. Um, with that being said, guys, I think it is time for us to wrap up this indie comic interview. What an awesome time. Brandon, thank you for coming on and breaking down not only Gallows Man, but everything in between. Um, guys, be sure to check them out on Facebook and Instagram at Dismay Comics. Uh, that information is on the screen as well in this uh, yeah, as well as in the description uh so with that being said we are going to be ending this brandon once again thank you for coming on i really appreciate it thank congratulations you. on almost doubling your goal uh, a little over halfway through the campaign that is that's awesome man and i can't wait to see what you do with issue number three um but with that being said guys we are going to be taking off we all have a fantastic wednesday keep tuned Stay tuned. <laughs> stay, keep tuned. Stay, same diff. Uh, stay tuned. We have another indie comic interview coming up at 9.30 p.m. EST. And uh, it's going to be a spicy one. So with that being said, guys, we are out and keep it geekly. <laughs>